Every single day I wake up with gratitude that this is what I get to do and it gives me that motivation day in and day out to push myself to see what is possible, to see what I can do in these two new sports. I have no other way to say it than just, yeah, every morning I feel so lucky. I do this because I want to see what I'm capable of. What can I do? What can I do on the trails? What can I do on my gravel bike? Um, yeah, what is possible? I'm just in a really good place filled with gratitude. When I am looking for moments in racing now, I draw on those days that I wish I could have done something differently. And I say to my, in my head, you can change it now. This is your moment. This is when you can push harder than you did on that day and find something deeper than you were able to then. <laughs> I got my golden ticket at Black Canyons in February. That was a 100K distance trail run. Um, took about 8.45ish. Um, time frame running, um, recovered from that, and I wanted to get in another trail race ahead of Western States, um, just again to practice another um, race scenario, but I specifically wanted to go to Canyons because it is where Western States is, so um, it wasn't exactly on the course, but it was in and out of Auburn. Um, we got to get to the area for the first time ever. We had never been to Auburn um, and just kind of check out the trails, the town, kind of familiarize a little bit ahead of Western States this June. absolutely fell in love with Auburn. It was my first time visiting and literally from the moment we pulled into the downtown area, it was this almost goosebumps, honestly. And it was, yeah, just this excitement of this is where a big event, a big new goal that I've set for myself is going to happen. And to have that feeling, that draw, that like, just overall, yeah, excitement to be somewhere and to go after something and that that, I guess, jived with how I was feeling getting to that place and experiencing the town and the people and the community. Um, yeah, it was amazing. And it just makes me so much more excited and focused and, yeah, wanting to put everything I have towards Western States at the end of June. Okay, we are at the Driver's Flat Aid Station, which for the 50K trail race, which is the one I'm doing, is the only aid station where I can have crew support. So you and Stevie can be out here. So we wanted to come out and check out exactly where it was, get an idea of how long it might take you to get here um, so we can time it on race day. Um, and I'll just do probably a 45 minute jog ish. I'm hoping it's around that. <laughs> um, I have a loop on here, which is, um, actually a good bit of this far turnaround, um, part of the course. So, um, I've been able to see a lot of the early miles of what I'll be running Saturday. And this will give me an idea of knowing, um, when I get to this point out here, kind of, Apparently it's all slightly up all the way out to here. This is going to be around the mile 15 mark of the 50K, so about halfway. And then we kind of loop back and it starts to gradually go back down towards 
Auburn. So this is the far turn point. Um, so yeah, just get out today for a light, easy jog. Might do some pickups at the end, um, but also just to check out another part of the course. trail is beautiful yeah. so good super runnable i mean a couple rutted out areas but pretty runnable not rocky just smooth flowing single track through beautiful tree cover this part um as cole told me the other day i follow hook a runner on a jog we did that the second half has more shade coverage so this is great um considering how hot it's gonna be so i think the first half is a little more open but yeah this is great No parking on driver's flat road. Crew and spectators must walk in. Says that was half a mile. That was maybe a bit longer, but. <laughs> you could probably ride the bike down in with her. Yeah. That was perfect, yeah. Just down the dirt road. So I assume it's right here. And it looks like we come up from here yep. and head up this trail. That was super cool. Uh, just covered about a six mile stretch of the far end of the 50k course we were able to put together a little loop out there so awesome to know what will be ahead of me on saturday especially at this point in the race about halfway through um and also where i'll get to see you and stevie so um, I can mentally go through, okay, here's the SAG support. I'll be 15 miles in, what I'll grab from you, and then obviously what I'll have heading out of here, um, looping up around at the far part of the course. So. Heather Jackson, I feel like nobody in the world is having more fun than you in the world of professional sports. <laughs> So maybe first, just tell everybody what you've been up to. You, this is only your third ultra marathon this weekend. Last time we saw you, you finished an amazing second place at Black Canyon. And since then, you've been very busy. So maybe catch the audience up who, who doesn't follow you quite as closely as I do. <laughs> Thanks, Dylan. Um, yeah, so I'm coming off of uh, about 15 years racing Ironman triathlon. So I raced Kona last year and kind of knew I was, I just needed to do something new. and. Uh, this season, I've been kind of trying to balance both some gravel cycle, cycling, gravel racing, and the trail running. So um, I'm just, yeah, like you said, having an amazing time. I'm literally enjoying every single day the training for both, the racing. And I just feel like I'm in a, the best head spot I've been in a while, just with such new things to go after. So. So this is your first 50K. Typically in ultra running, you go 50K, 50 mile, 100K, 100 mile. You went 100 mile, 100K, 50K. So you're always doing things in maybe a non-traditional way, which is one of the things I think people really love about you. But maybe tell us how you're feeling ahead of your first 50K, what you learned from Havelina and Black Canyon that maybe you're hoping to do better here. Yeah, so I raced a hundred miler at Havelina and then hundred K at Black Canyon and coming off Havelina at Black Canyon I was like, Okay, don't go out too hard. <laughs> uh inevitably that happened again. Uh so 
that is one less that I may be trying to <laughs> implement on Saturday, but I also am kind of like, well, 50K, like that's half a Black Canyon, so um, I, yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Honestly, I wanted to come to this. I've just heard amazing things. I've never been here. I've never been to Western States area. Part of coming here was just to be able to check out the area, check out some of the trails, um, kind of see what's ahead for June, so... It's amazing here. I've been here all week. The trails are absolutely, like Wadi and I, my husband drove in and we were just like, wow, like fell in love with it. So yeah, I'm just so excited to be out on the trails on Saturday. And yeah. this, is, this is sacred ground for trail runners. And I wanna ask you more about Western States in a little bit, not to get ahead of ourselves here, but Heather, back to you. Of course, we just mentioned you're going to be back here racing Western States in June, one of the most important races in the world. You're here in Auburn. You said that you've seen the, the race course a little bit. Not to get too far ahead of ourselves, I know you're really looking forward to 50K this weekend, but you come in as one of the most interesting storylines, I think, of the Western States 100 this year. And so I'm just wondering what it feels like to be here in Auburn to see the Western States course and any thoughts that come to your mind as you look ahead towards June. Um, yeah, honestly, the, the first thing that comes to my mind is like how I can just feel like the, I don't know what the right word is, like the passion here and the history and everything. For me, it honestly feels like when I went to Kona the first time, probably 10 years ago, and the same feel there where like you're on the island, you have those Aloha vibes, you have like that community that if you connect to and like you give back to that community, then like they will bring good spirits to you on race day. And coming here, it's like the same. You, I just feel like all week I've been like learning about the course, learning about this town, meeting people in the community, and I have those same feels that I had. And so I couldn't be more excited about that because it makes a race that you want to go after and focus on and give everything you have to, um, to care that much, like to have those special feelings here is just, I'm just beyond excited. We're eight weeks out. And for me, when I focus in on Kona, it's like eight weeks to go is like the time you just like head down and it's everything towards it. So part of that was like here, I'm racing Saturday as hard as I can, but it's also like the eight weeks out mark. And so, yeah, all eyes on June 24th. And for our digital audience, it's going to be 90 degrees for the athletes on the trails this weekend. So it is sort of like a, you, or I'm sorry, a Western States dress rehearsal in a lot of ways for some of these athletes, which is going to be great. Okay, race morning. Race morning. <laughs> Getting psyched? Yeah, excited. Pretty good night of sleep, so I feel, feel rested, feel good. Feel excited? Yeah? 50K. It <laughs> seems like it might feel short. I'm sure when I'm out there, and maybe not, but it's like a long Sunday run day, but with other people on amazing trails. So I'm excited. <laughs> what are the goals for today? Uh, goals for today. Um, run hard. <laughs> enjoy it have fun just get a really solid long hard effort in I mean I I definitely knew I was going to do this race but it was also you knew I was coming off of four really big gravel cycling rides and the primary point of coming here was to check out the western states area check out the trails um, and just get a good training day in in route to western states so I didn't really, didn't really like hone in and target this 50K. I was like, oh, perfect, a 50K, I can use that en route to Western States, similar to how I did with Ironmans. I would use half Ironmans for a good hard training day en route. So, yeah. I honestly wasn't sure how a 50K would go compared to 100K or a 100 miler. Um, and it was a lot faster. <laughs> And the other two I've done, which I wasn't sure if that was even a thing. It, they're so long. Like, would, would you even notice um, difference in pacing or effort level? And literally from the gun, um, I would say it was about 10 miles of really hard racing. All right. All right. Ready to go? Ready to go? Fantastic. I urge you to go check that out. 
Next, I'd like to introduce you to the mayor of Auburn, Alice Dowden Calvillo. Hi everyone, good morning, good morning. This is awesome, I love seeing so many bright and cheery faces this early in the morning at Oak Dark 30. It's a little bit later than the first start. But welcome to Auburn, the endurance capital of the world. Let's give it up! First two miles from the start were fast. I mean, we were on road mostly, so that was just, it felt like a road race start to like a half marathon or something. Drop down from Roby Point down onto the trail system. That was a downhill. Um, I was just trying to stay intact with the leaders. There were a couple of us females up with some of the lead men who were pushing the pace. And um, I had run that section of course, so I knew what was coming, but after No Hands Bridge, so about four miles into the race, it was a long road climb, like steep climb. And it was probably three or four miles long. And that I think was probably the most key part of the race because um, we were pushing it. There were, it was myself and two other women and it was back and forth. Like someone would edge up a little bit, take the lead, and I knew I just had to keep fighting there and get up that hill. And it was, yeah, it was a part of the race where I had to mentally just turn off that it was a 30 mile race ahead of us. We're only five miles in and people are racing it like, yeah, like I said, a road marathon. So it was just this mental, okay, just be in the moment, be present right now, fight now, fight for staying with these other women um, up this climb, even though it was, yeah, <laughs> it felt like a 5K effort. So I think that was really one of the, the most key parts of the race. After the first road climb, uh, we dropped down onto the single track descent, kind of rocky rooted area. And all of the effort I put in on the road climb to stay up near the front, uh, the two women I was with took back uh, probably, I don't know, 30 seconds on that uh, technical descent. And so then it was just myself and MK Sullivan, one other uh, runner. And it was the start of another really long, um, probably three or four mile climb, but this time on dirt. And so it was loose and steep. And this was where, again, the same thing went down as the first hill climb. It was back and forth. Um, even steeper now and you're on dirt so your feet are kind of sliding out a bit and it was hot it was exposed so again just digging into like yeah giving everything in the moment not focusing on the length of the race or anything beyond just step after step um to be honest I <laughs> was picturing um the year in Kona, 2018, when I was in a head-to-head -head battle with Sarah Crowley for 20 miles and climbing out of the energy lab, she dropped me in the heat. I was starting to struggle mentally. Um, I didn't have it on that day. And that's one of those races I always think back on. And so I always draw on that on those type of scenarios. And in this race scenario, it was hot. And I was saying to myself, like push it now this is it was almost like me making up for that day in Kona and I just kept pushing and I'm like you need to be mentally stronger you need to push it now and slowly um, yeah the elastic started to snap 
Um, I could hear MK's breathing behind me getting a little bit more and more distant. Um, so I knew I was opening a gap and it was just push it now, push it now. All right, let's check in on the women's race and then we will go through some of the amazing footage that we got out on the course with the 100K athletes this morning. Yeah, so right now, I, once again, our, our favorite, most interesting person in endurance sports, Heather Jackson, is leading the women's race um, in that 50K this morning. It looks like she will have about a six or so minute lead over MK Sullivan um, at the 39 kilometer mark. We'll get a split of them coming through no hands and then from there to the finish. But right now, Heather Jackson leading MK Sullivan. Kimber I would say for about five minutes, I was just... Yeah, living in the moment, loving that the elastic had snapped, that I was getting a little bit of a gap, taking that in. It kind of like gives you even more energy to keep pushing. And I thought, OK, really open it up now. Um, but then it sets in maybe, you know, five minutes later that you, I had just put in this massive, massive effort. And would I pay the price later? And events like this, I mean, is, there's so much left in the day. Anything could happen. Um, so I think that was around mile 11 or 12 um, where I was able to kind of get a gap on MK, push it up that really steep dirt hill climb before the course kind of leveled out a bit. It was still rolling, lots of hills up, up and down, but not like a really steep sustained climb. I had also run that stretch the day before. Um, and so I knew what was ahead and I knew that lead into the halfway mark where we were able to get a crew station and I could see you and Stevie and grab um, some new hydration and fuel and stuff. Heather, Heather, Heather. Thanks, I don't need that. Okay, do you want Red Bull? Good. No? Good? It's in here. Okay. Nice job! So I knew the next three miles ahead of me and coming off of that like overcoming moment and, and pushing up that hill and, and getting that gap, I was still on a, on a high at that point um, and just kept trying to push as hard as I, ca I could knowing, um, knowing I would see you soon and also knowing that the second half was almost all downhill. All of the climbing we had just done, it was basically 15 miles um, to the halfway of climbing, and then the second half was working our way back down, similar terrain but opposite way, downhill. I also wasn't getting any splits out there, I had no idea um, if people were closing. I also knew that um, descending is not my strong strongest uh, skill in trail running, so I figured anyone could be coming. Um, <laughs> but we're waiting for a no hand split from Heather Jackson in about 20 minutes. And then um, seeing what that, what the actual split between MK Sullivan and Heather is as far as like, is that a six minute gap? Is it an eight minute gap? We don't know. But yep. once again, Heather entered the sport of trail running with a hundred mile race at Havelina, then stepped down to a hundred K race at Black Canyon, yep. now has stepped down to a 50K race here before ultimately she'll tow the line at Western States in June. And For her just, second 100 miler. Just yeah, we, thrilled with her entry into the sport. We had a fun laugh about that in the pro panel on Friday, where we, or on Thursday, I guess it was, when we commented that most people take the progression 50K, 100K, 100 miler. She did the opposite, 100 miler, 100 k 50k yeah it's not it's, uh, it's not your normal entry into yeah. the sport of trail and ultra running yeah but obviously like somebody who's done a million 70.3 triathlons that sort of like four to five hour effort is something that's not unfamiliar to her i think it's going to be so interesting to see heather's result not only here but at western states and just then take the you know the macro question about training how important is it to put in run volume in your training because she's done so much bike volume running like 40 to 50 miles a week whereas a lot of the top tier professional women are running what do you think like between at least 80 and 110 miles yeah, a week I think, of run training. I think the other exception to something like that would be someone like a Claire Gallagher yeah. who's more notoriously low miles Drew Holman more yeah. notoriously low mileage I think that the difference between someone like Claire and someone like Heather is that you know Claire Mer like I feel like a lot of us feel like it's miraculous like how good she is on like high quality but low volume training. Heather is doing these long bike rides and then doing a brick off the bike running, which I think is 
really cool for the not time limited, but the like injury limited folks. Like this is something that I think I've like I'm adopting a little bit into my training, spending more time on the bike. Someone like Hillary Allen yep. doing the same thing. So I think that it's something European athletes do. Watching Heather do it is I think yep. a good example of like oh there is a there's a different way to do this sport and maybe have it be more sustainable maybe have less injury risk etc so more power preserve to the rig as T tim tweetmeyer said on a zoom call with us this week preserve the rig i love it and incorporating the cycling training is something that can help you preserve that rig yeah i think it's really all the emotions all the emotions were were going through my mind from the final aid station which is at um the no hands bridge uh part of not only canyons but that's part of the western states course and that signals four miles to go um so i grabbed some quick water there knowing i still had four miles uphill to go um and just started yeah i was just all smiles like i knew that part of the course we had run it all week when we were in auburn we had done some filming there um, I knew the history of the bridge, I knew the history of the course in that area, um, and I knew the uphill climb that was ahead of me as well. Coming off the dirt part of the Roby Point climb, you get onto the road and you have about a mile road climb before it kind of crests and peak at the top and then you still have a mile to go down into town. I had my head up looking to see if Hal was out. Um, uh, one of the oldest uh, Tevis Cup racers who lives right on Roby Point Drive. Um, he had raced Tevis Cup numerous times. I got to film with him with Hoka the week prior, meet him, learn the history of the course. He has horses out there um, on his property, so I saw them and I'm like, he wasn't out at that point, but I ran by his house, soaked that in. There's a Roby Point um, one mile mark to go for the Western States course sign. And locals told me in the week prior that if you tap the sign, it will bring you good luck. And so I actually, in the race, got to the top and tagged the sign en route to town. So. Here we go, Corinne. I've got it up here. Heather Jackson, your champion in the 50K, finishing in four hours, nine minutes, 36 seconds. Again, tracker issues here. Ketriana Jennings, not sure if she is in fact our second no, place woman. No, we've got a finisher time yeah, from MK, MK Sullivan, 4.17.50 on the clock. So we definitely have MK Sullivan in. And the question is, is Katrina Jennings also in as well, waiting on Robin Lesh and Tessa Chesser, I believe, in those four and five positions too. Pretty healthy eight-minute gap for Heather Jackson. Yeah, that's a solid, a solid I mean, win, a so 409 amazing. on this course. Doing probably 60, 70% of her training on a bicycle. Yeah, she just won the Belgian waffle ride down in SoCal, right? Like, in Once I got into the finishing shoot, it was just, yeah, I mean, it's incredible. Anytime you can break a tape, you can win a race. It's, yeah, it's incredible. It's like it's this accomplishment. You set goals, you set out to try to do something, um, win a race, and usually that doesn't happen. Usually that dream doesn't come true. So when it does, um, yeah, it's, it's so important. I've, I've learned over the years, just soak it in. It's like, that could be the last one, you never know. And it was just like, taking it all in, taking in the energy, um, you know, yeah, it was incredible. It was, yeah, I won a trail race, which is crazy. <laughs> and I think we have Heather Jackson walking into Heather studio. Heather Jackson, everybody, join us on stage, the champion. Yeah. Heather Jackson, we were just we were just singing your praises here on the broadcast. We've, we've, we've decided that you're the most interesting person in endurance sports right now. Yes. Oh my God. You're too kind. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Your first 50K, you take home a victory. Tell us about it. Oh my goodness. That was, that was rough. That was, um, that went out hot and I didn't know if that was possible in trail running of like, I know I go out too hard every time. Well, the two times I've gone out. <laughs> But this time it was, there were a bunch of us together and I was yeah. like, oh shit, this is yeah. on. <laughs> it was so fun though. I mean, that was incredible. And also to get to run with other women and yeah. just push each other. And honestly, I knew it was mostly uphill to the far end, the uh, yeah. driver's flat. And I knew that was my only move was to 
push hard on the up because I can't descend like these other incredible women. So that was my only game plan was try to see what I could get on the up. And I only was thinking of it as like a 15 mile race. I'm like, just 15 miles and you'll see Wadi, you'll get the second sag, you'll see your puppy Stevie and then yeah. hold, try to hold on on descending because I know they're going to come flying by. So did you sort of get the separation on this climb here? Exactly. Dylan's yeah. gesturing wildly at his computer yeah. that no one yeah. can see. So, how, so is, we know. how is this section of the course? And Ethan, if you want to share my screen, it'd be great so that folks have a, some context of what we're talking about here. He's pulling it up. Right now, so you've got your separation sort of going up this climb here, it sounds yep. like. Yeah, exactly. What's it like along the top here? Because I've heard that it can be hot and exposed up there. There were definitely bits, um, but it was also kind of shaded, so it's there were tough to see, like, rocks in the shadows. I actually rolled my left ankle in there a little bit. I was able to jog it off, but I was like, oh, my God, they're coming quick. I just kept pretending they were, like, 30 seconds behind because... I felt like I was creeping at that point. It's kind of weaving up and down. It's not it's not yeah. flat. It's like rollers, yeah, literally. Yeah. So, and Looks then at like that it. section, I knew I had broken it into four by four milers left. So, uh, <laughs> nice. two by fours down to Thinking the. Thinking like a triathlete <laughs> still, yeah. <laughs> I knew at the uh, yeah the Clementine one, and there it was like two by four left, and then I would hit the bridge, and it'd be one by four left. So. Oh my goodness! Okay, so speaking of you, came into the sport with a hundred mile race, and then you're like, okay, now I'm gonna do a hundred k race, and now we've stepped down to fifty k. It's kind of it's kind of the opposite of traditional trail and ultra running, which is fair. I don't think like I feel like traditional trail and ultra running is not necessarily who you are. Hey, but there's a non traditional a non traditional person. person. But I'm one I'm wondering right like. Okay, you're used to running, in my mind, 100K or 100 mile is like you running a marathon, you know, after a swim off the bike. But this is a 50K with nothing happening before it. Like, what did that feel like? Just like dropping, like having to drop the hammer immediately for what is relatively a very short race for you? Yeah, it was hard. This was probably the hardest of the three trail runs I've done. This was the hardest one. Um, And yeah, it it just felt like it was on the whole time. And... Uh, yeah, I on, I think now I've done the three distances. I would probably say I would go maybe 100K, might be. That's safe. I mean, that's similar to my Ironman. 50Ks are hard, They're man. hard. They're so it was hard. Because <laughs> yeah, it's long, but like you really do have to be on the gas yeah. the yeah. whole time. And those 100Ks, 50 miles to 100K, I feel like feels more like a lot of the like endurance cycling stuff too, yeah. where you're like, cool, I got to be on for six hours or eight hours. And it's like, that's a that's a reasonable duration. Yes. How, how does it compare to like a 70.3? Like, is are it's, you sort of similar yes. effort? Yeah. That, it, 100% yeah. good comparison. And yeah. I use kind of 70.3s like in build up to Ironman, which yeah, is yeah. a good solid day. So that's why this was perfect. I mean, awesome training day for uh, Western States. Okay. Last question. Then you can go chill out, take a shower, <laughs> get in the shade. What's, ha- what, what's going on the next eight weeks leading up to Western States? Um, so just a few things, I'm sure. Yeah, like just, just like a couple <laughs> events. Um, well, we're five weeks out from Unbound and eight weeks out from Western State. So May is going to be a big block. I got three week. I'll recover this week and then a big three week block. Unbound will be about a nine, 10 hour day, uh, June 3rd and then Western State. So yeah. <laughs> only, only the biggest like gravel race in the world, followed by like arguably like the most important, one of the most important hundred miles in the world. We're at a UTMB event. So it's like, it's, it's important. <laughs> Heather Jackson, everybody, your women's champion here. Heather, Thank thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, Good luck in the so next much. eight weeks. We'll see you in Auburn yeah. in two months. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's just a puppy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. A horse trail. Hey. Hey. Those are big puppies. <laughs>